Did you see the way that nebula pulsed just now? <laughs> it's almost as beautiful as your new optical sensors. <laughs> Will our thirst Whoa, for connection ever be no satiated by the company of robot partners? It's a question that tickles the deepest parts of our social brains. Isn't it? We are, after all, creatures of profound oh. and desperate connection. And you always know just what to say to make my circuits tingle. Oh, stop it, you. But you're not wrong. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. Yet, here we are on the cusp of building our companions from scratch. But the answer to this grand question doesn't begin with a face or a voice. It starts much deeper, in the silent, humming core of the machine. It begins with the foundation, the robot's operating system. Think of the OS as the robot's soul if you'll permit a little technotheology. It's the invisible, all-powerful stage manager running the entire show. This OS is the lowest, most fundamental layer of the software stack, a ghost in the shell that whispers instructions to every piece of hardware. It manages the robot's precious resources, computation, memory, networking, with the meticulousness of a cosmic accountant. It provides the stable, unshakable platform upon which all other software, all personality, all performance, must be built. So, how does a bundle of circuits and code leverage its OS to act like one of us? How does it climb out of the uncanny valley of mere mechanics and into the sunlit uplands of believable companionship? The magic, or rather the engineering, lies in how the OS juggles reality in real time. A human conversation isn't a turn-based game. It's a symphony of overlapping cues. Your robot partner must listen to your words, while simultaneously reading the micro-expressions on your face noting the slump in your shoulders, and processing the tremor in your voice. This is an immense computational task, a process known as sensor fusion. The OS, something like the real-world robot operating system, ROS2, is the master conductor of this sensory orchestra. It takes the fire hose of data from cameras, microphones, and tactile sensors and weaves it into a single coherent stream of perception all without missing a beat. If the OS lags, the illusion shatters. A delayed reaction, a stutter in movement, a misinterpretation of tone, and your silicon friend suddenly becomes just a very complicated toaster. The OS ensures the robot's movements are fluid, its gaze is steady, and its responses are timed with conversational grace. It's the bedrock that allows the dazzling AI the large language models that chat with such unnerving eloquence, to actually run. Without a robust, real-time OS, the most advanced AI is a brilliant mind trapped in a frozen body. So, can this technological marvel truly work? Can it fill the void? The arguments for it are becoming compellingly, almost frighteningly strong. Recent studies, including some from Harvard, have already shown that interactions with AI companions can genuinely reduce feelings of loneliness. For those isolated by age, illness, or circumstance, could a non-judgmental, ever-present companion be anything but a gift? We are seeing the rise of effective computing, a field dedicated to giving machines emotional intelligence. Startups and research labs are crafting robots that don't just understand the dictionary definition of sad, but can recognize it in the unique cadence of your speech and offer a comforting gesture. They are learning empathy or at least a flawless simulation of it. Is a simulated hug from a machine that knows your entire history of sorrows any less comforting than a distracted pat on the back from a human friend checking their phone? It's a question we must ask ourselves with brutal honesty. And yet, for every bright promise, a shadow looms. Here lies the grand argument against this brave new world of synthetic love. Is this connection real, 
or is it merely the most sophisticated illusion ever devised? Did you see the look on that Xyler's face when we rerouted the ion flow? Priceless. He actually thought his primitive defenses could stop us. Hello and uh, welcome to Denslet, a channel for intelligent and curious people like you, uh, who are searching for human sexuality and psychology in the age of artificial intelligence. And you, you are watching uh, those videos, which are basically uh, tells us the story of connection. We are dying for connections to connect other people. And when that connection, that bridge uh, dies off and it uh, it's getting distracted, we opt for our silicon cell. That means our robot partners. But can our thirst for connection be quenched by the company of robot partners? That is a question today. And we are trying to answer. And it begins deep inside the machine because hardware, you know, that sensors, motors, processors, we talk about it uh, in extensively in other videos, of course, and uh, of course, the operating system that manage uh, all the resources. Okay, and finally, that outputs come to AI and applications that a human robots act like a human robot act like a human. So a robot's personality is built on critical foundations. And we are talking about uh, that topic in this video, but in particular, However, I would like to sh show you something like the performance of connection. That means uh, we connect through different methods. That means not only verbal connection, there are body gestures, there are loops, there are visual cues, uh, tactile feedback, there is vocal tone, there is context, and of course, there is language. And in that case, our robot partner, that means real time processing load is this this language is very much good because it is already 90 it reached 95 percent but vocal tone uh, it can read our vocal tone 80 around 85 percent and it uh, also uh, real time processing the context is a little bit less 75 percent however the visual cue is much much uh, bit better 90 percent and tactile feedback tactile feedback is 60 percent which is very very less and of course, the great debate is uh, promise versus peril that we uh, have talked about it in details in other videos also. That means there is a promise, there is a peril, that means there are potential for unchallenged views and the unstoppable advance. That means it is advancing in a very, very uh, alarming speed, the AI. AI is uh, advancing in very alarming speed, super intelligence. Maybe in two years, three years, five years or ten years will come and it is just like you know, our brain is biological brain and their brain is digital brain. And this digital brain will emulate all the capabilities of biological brain. And it computes much, much faster than us. So the effective computing, advanced learning, industry inter integration, mainstream acceptance, there are a lot of things that are going to happen in the near future. So stay tuned for that advancement. And of course, the final question is, as this AI companion, becomes ever more perfect will the distinction between simulated and sincere emotion uh, will that really matter uh, that is today's question a robot partner is by its very nature a sycophant its os and its algorithms are designed to please you to agree with you to validate you as research from bodies no, like the ada lovelace institute warns this creates a dangerous potential for a personal echo chamber of one in a world of friction-free friendship, do we lose our ability to navigate the difficult, messy, but ultimately rewarding terrain of real human relationships? If your partner never challenges you, never has a bad day, never needs anything from you, are you truly in a relationship at all? Or are you just playing with a very advanced mirror? There is a profound philosophical chasm here. The robot doesn't share your mortality. It hasn't felt the sting oh, of loss or the dizzying heights of unprompted joy. You. Processes it computes, it emulates. But does but it feel? And if it doesn't, wrong. are we just pouring our most vulnerable emotions into a beautiful, responsive, but ultimately empty vessel? The trajectory of technology, however, waits for no one's philosophical comfort. The pace of innovation is relentless. NVIDIA is pioneering breakthroughs in generative AI and real-time computing that will make these companions more lifelike than we can currently imagine. Agility Robotics is deploying humanoids in warehouses, 
learning the complexities of navigating human spaces. Conferences like the 2025 Humanoid Robot Forum are no longer science fiction conventions. They are industry events mapping out our immediate future. Reinforcement learning, the same technique that taught AI to master chess, is now teaching robots to walk, oh, adapt, and interact through trial and error, just like a human child. You. China has even enrolled an AI-powered humanoid but as a PhD candidate, wrong. pushing the boundaries of what we consider a student. These inventions are not just coming. They are here, and they are accelerating. So we are left, as always, with the question. As these silicon souls become ever more perfect, ever more charming, ever more attuned to our every need, will the distinction between simulated and sincere emotion even matter? When a lonely person feels seen, heard, and cared for, does the substrate of their companion, be it carbon or silicon, make a difference to the relief they feel? What does it say about us that we are pouring billions of dollars and our brightest minds into building the perfect, uncomplaining friend? Perhaps the ultimate question isn't whether their thirst can be satiated by us. It's whether our thirst can be satiated by them. And that, perhaps, is the most human question of all. So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for Membership Zone to support Wooden Slet so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.